the biggest lie in the mini PC marketing that they are gaming ready. They're not. For $99 US, the Minis Forum DG1 Oculink Dock flips the script. Plug in a real GPU and suddenly your mini PC performs like a desktop. I've tested it for weeks with very different setups. Here's what you need to know, but first, the unboxing. Inside the box, paperwork no one reads. The DG1 in brushed aluminium, thankfully no cheap plastic. A half meter Oculink cable a sturdy GPU and PSC brace and 5 screws. No RGB, no gimmicks, just the essentials to turn a mini PC into a gaming machine. The EG1 is brutally functional. One Oculink port, PCIe bracket, PSU padding with a 24-pin socket, power button and a small logo. That's it. No fake gamer aesthetics, because the point is performance. It runs PCIe 4.0 times 4, 64 Gbps theoretical bandwidth. In real life, that's faster than Thunderbolt 4, usual 22 to 32 Gbps, and that's why Minis Forum skipped USB 4 entirely. The DG1 was never meant for daisy chaining docks or spare ports. It's a dock built around one job letting GPU run free. When you first see it, the frame looks industrial, maybe even ugly, but Pick it up, fit a PSU, slot in a card, and it makes sense. Everything about it's rock solid, made to last, and unapologetically practical. Setup feels like building a stripped down desktop, only quicker. PSU first. I dropped in a standard 750W ATX, but SFX units fit too. GPU next. My first test was a triple fan Radeon RX 9060 XT. Slot in, locked, and braced with a support bar to prevent sag. Power up, 24 pin from PSU to dock, 8 pin PCIe into the GPU, nothing tricky, no adapters, just like a desktop. Now Oculink, half a meter cable straight to the mini PC, no Thunderbolt bottleneck, no okay. software layer, just raw PCIe pass through. Now boot and go, Windows picked up drivers instantly, no bloat, no fuss. And here's the key, it works with any PCIe GPU, it doesn't matter if it's Radeon or Nvidia, I tested both and they ran flawlessly. Limitations are simple, you need an Oculink ready mini PC or SFF desktop. Intel Macs with metal see it, but Apple Silicon won't. Now let's talk about speed. Everyone knows USB 4 tops around 40 GPS, but in practice you get 28, maybe 32. Oculink is different. It consistently hits 41 to 58 Gbps, which is nearly native PCIe performance. That's the DG1's secret weapon. And this design choice makes sense. The DG1 doesn't even support USB 4. It was built for more powerful GPUs, the kind that actually need that extra bandwidth. To test it, I started with the Radeon RX 9060 XT triple fan card, Forza Horizon 5 at 2K Ultra, smooth 100 FPS. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 2K, FSR 4, no stutter at all. Atomfall at 4K with FSR 4 again, 100 FPS, solid results. But then I swapped in Asus RTX 5070, dual fan and everything changed. Smaller, newer GDDR7 with a 192 bit bus. In every test it outperformed the Radeon while running cooler and quieter. Forza Horizon 5 at 4K Extreme with DLSS, 130 FPS with up to 400 FPS in 2K. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 4K DLSS, 160fps and over 250fps at 2K. And Grand Theft Auto 5 Enhanced Edition, all settings maxed, DLSS on 130fps at 4K and over 250 at 2K. Visuals looked incredible. That's when I realized this is the real sweet spot. I'm planning to upgrade to the RTX 5070 Ti with 16 gigs of VRAM and 256 bit bus and maybe even the RTX 5080 Ti. But here's the reality check. If you're thinking about pairing a DG1 with an RTX 5090 Ti or RX 9080, don't. The times for lanes become the bottleneck. You'll never unlock the full potential on those flagship cards here. So the RTX 5070 Ti 16 gigs, that's where this setup truly shines. Smooth AAA, buttery S-Port frames and desktop class gaming without wasted silicon. 
After pushing frame rates that high, the next question is always, but what about heat and noise? Here's where the open air design of the EG1 shows its strength. With no enclosure to trap heat, cooling feels almost effortless. On my thermal cam, the Radeon triple fan card often didn't even bother spinning its fans during lighter loads. And the smaller dual fan RTX 5070, same story, laser spins, temps just as good as the triple fan. That's when it clicked. Three fans are overkill here. Two fans are plenty. Airflow is never a bottleneck. Cooling is easy. Noise is minimal. In fact, most of the sound doesn't even come from the GPU. It comes from the PSU. Some units stay completely fanless until heavy loads, while others kick in earlier. To give context, I compared it against a compact and closed eGPU, the Boss Game GVP7600. It's portable, yes, but under load it gets noticeably louder. That comparison proved it. Open modular setups like the EG1 win hands down for silence. Now let's talk reality. This is bare bones by design. No enclosure equals dust risk. Exposed parts, zero portability. PCIe 4.0 times 4 lane equals great efficiency, but it will bottleneck ultra high end GPUs. And yes, driver quicks and bias tweaks might be required. But here's the reality for $99 US, you're not buying convenience, you're buying raw performance. So, who is this for? Students who want one small box for essays, Zoom, Netflix, then game hard at night with a GPU, that's perfect. Budget gamers who can't justify a giant tower but want smooth 2K or even 4K, this is the bridge. Tinkerers who love modular builds, you will love it. And casual home users like myself who just want a quiet media box, leave the GPU off and it's still useful. So if you like DIY and value flexibility, this is for you. If you want RGB polish and carry anywhere possibility, skip it. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. I know you want to. Family Pop TV.